Welcome back everyone to our second week reading Images of God. So if you haven't seen the first half of this book yet, I would encourage you to go back and take a look at last week's video to make sure you're all caught up on all the different ways there are to describe God and what God is and who God is. And we're going to continue on page 46. God is wisdom. Sometimes what happens on earth seems crazy. People kill, wound, and imprison other people. They destroy the animals and ruin the planet. And yet, the earth and the heavens are so beautiful. People are beautiful when they work together to make life good for one another. Then they bear the image of God who created the world with wisdom. God is deliverance. God can deliver us when we are locked up by things that keep us from being loving and joyful and generous, by everything that pre prevents us from looking at life with confidence. Do you see your life confidently? Are you able to be loving and joyous and give to those around you because you know that your life is going well? God is a covenant. Covenant is a big fancy word for a promise. When couples give each other rings, it is a sign that they want to be linked all the days of their lives. There is a beautiful story that tells how long ago God gave the ring of a rainbow to God's beloved people, promising that the spirit would be with them now and always. See that beautiful rainbow there? Is God what you think of when you see a rainbow? When you do see a rainbow, you can think of God's promise to always be with us and to protect us. God is a mystery. God is present everywhere, and yet some say that the spirit is not there. God reigns over the world with love, and yet the world is full of misery. God wants us to know the spirit and yet doesn't show it. God is completely unlike us and yet makes us in the spirit's image. But because God is a mystery, we have to work to understand the creator better. God is beauty. The mountain peaks and the great depths of the sea, the light of day and the shadows of night, the marvelous birds and the fabulous fish, the multitudes of trees, of plants and of animals. All these splendors are just a tiny reflection of the perfect beauty of God. But perhaps what reflects God's beauty the best is the expression of people who love who hope, and who work to make life beautiful. God is justice. Before judging others, we should see, know, and understand who they are and why they did or did not do something. We should walk a mile in their shoes, as the proverb says. God sees, knows, and understands much better than we do, exactly who we are and why we act the way we do. God walks in our shoes every day. Have you ever gotten really frustrated with something someone has done and thought, they shouldn't do that, they should know better? Well, that's what it means to judge somebody else. Maybe we don't know the reason they're doing that. Maybe there's something we don't know about but God knows. And so it's better just to make sure everything's okay and everyone is okay. Not worry about judging what people are doing. God is holiness. God is perfect beauty, perfect goodness, all love, all joy, all peace. God wants us to have this holiness too. God is peace. 
there are so many people in so many countries at war. And some even say that they fight in the name of God. God looks all over the earth for places where peace can exist. Let's help God find these places. Can you think of a place that requires God's peace? Maybe you can name one right now. Mm. I know I could use some peace in my heart. How about you? God is mercy. God comforts us when we are not proud of what we've done. God always looks at us with eyes full of mercy because God loves in us what we wish to be. And under that look of mercy, we become better. God is love. God is love and love is patient and considerate. It is not jealous. It is not proud. Love is not angry. It forgives everything. Love lasts forever. God is a shepherd. A shepherd always walks near their sheep to encourage them. They count them to make sure that not a single one has strayed. They take them to graze in the best grassy meadows so that they will give the best milk. Like a shepherd, God wants to lead us where life is the best so that we can give the best of ourselves. God is a ruler and an emperor. God is the greatest ruler of all. God reigns over the world for eternity. The creator is the most magnificent ruler dressed in the splendor of the universe. God is also the most hidden of emperors, the most secret, the most silent. The creator has entrusted the earth to us and asks us to reign over it with care, justice, and goodness. God is a healer. God sees what is good in us. The creator also sees what is sick. If we ask God, God will take care of us. God helps us remove what is bad, clean what is dirty, and straighten what is twisted. As a doctor heals our bodies, God can heal our hearts. Have you ever felt so angry with someone for something that they've done and we start to think bad things about them? If you ever find yourself feeling that way, consider praying to God for peace, for understanding, for compassion, for love, and see if God can help you feel a little bit better and fill your heart with peace before you approach that person. God is a friend. You can tell everything to a friend. You can also be silent around a friend and simply feel comfortable. A friend finds the words to comfort you when you are sad and laughs with you when you are happy. A friend listens, encourages, and understands. God is like this, like the best of friends. God is always with you and will always hear you and listen to you and be there when you need them. God is a savior. When we are about to fall, when we are sad or frightened, we need someone to take our hand, to comfort us and reassure us. God wants to do that for us. Sometimes this is difficult to believe, but if there is still so much evil, death and grief in our world, it is only because God has not had the last word yet. So even when you see things are bad, believe that God is still coming to fix it and to help, maybe through a person or maybe through God's own power, but it will get better. God is majesty. That's a pretty big word. Let's read on to see if we can understand what majesty is. God is everywhere and holds all things, the earth the heavens, and the creatures that live in them. The creator's glory is even grander than the heavens. 
When we try to imagine such greatness, it can be a little scary, but we can also just be amazed. Did you get a feeling for what majesty is? A greatness, a big presence that is everywhere. God is smallness. We know that God is huge and yet also makes the spirit small. God decided to live in our world to be a baby who needs a mother who has to learn to walk and talk. Hmm. Who are we talking about there? Let's see if you can guess and tell the people in your family if you think you know who that is. God is a child that each one of us can carry in our arms. Have you ever held a baby and thought, this is God? God has a face. No one has seen God, but Jesus came to us. He was born and grew up living on earth like all of us. Jesus told us that God is his creator and our creator. In Jesus, God took on a body and a face and those who saw him and touched him have told us about him. Where have they told us about this? If your guess is the Bible, you are correct. We can learn all about Jesus's life in the gospels, in the Bible. God is a parent. A parent says to a child, come, I will show you the world. Come, I will teach you about life. Do your parents do that? Do your parents work hard to show you the world around you and to teach you all about life and living well? When the child is grown up, the parent says, go on. It's up to you to make your own way. The parent watches the child leave, happy and proud to see the child walk alone, free. But the parent still loves the child, always. So remember that you have free will. God has given you free will. And even if you use that free will, make a mistake or do something that makes you feel bad, God is still with you. And will always love you no matter what. Always and always. God is bread. We need to eat. To live, to grow, and to be strong. Bread is a symbol of everything that gives life. Of everything that nourishes the earth's people. If we do not have anything to eat, we die. God wants us to live. God has given us Jesus, and Jesus, in giving us the bread of his body, gives us never-ending life from God. So we see this at communion, right? We break bread and we share in it together. And we remember the promise that Jesus made to us in reaffirming our covenant. Remember that big word? The promise God made to us. God is life. We know how seeds sprout and grow to become plants and trees. We know how a baby forms month by month in a mother's belly. But the spark of life, where does that come from? That is the great mystery. If God is the one who gives life, then God is life. Have you ever done this at home? God is with us. This God of words and of silence, this God of light and of night, this God who is strength, beauty, peace, love, and forgiveness, this God who heals, who frees, and who saves, this God is the one we call our creator. God is with us every day until the day we will be in heaven with the spirit. Yeah. So what do you think? Did you get some ideas 
of who God is to you? Did you come up with a collection of words that you can use to help yourself define who God is? Do you have a picture in your head of who God is? So now I'd like you to either find somebody who can help you write or get something you can write with yourself and you can make a list of the words that spoke to you. If you don't remember them all, you can go back through the videos and you can try and make a list for yourself. Or you can use all of these descriptions and the pictures you saw to draw for yourself a picture of what you imagine God to be. When we talk about God having a face, we're talking about Jesus coming down to earth to be with us. But when you picture God, do you picture a face? Do you picture the wind? Do you picture mountains and flowers, animals, holding a baby? Do you imagine the feeling? If you have trouble picturing something, maybe you can move in a way that expresses how you see God. So I would challenge you to spend some time thinking how, about how you can best express who God is to you in a way that feels right to you.